The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. Almost Thanksgiving. We got one more full day of trading tomorrow. Closed for Thanksgiving holiday. TFNN will be closed on Friday. The market technically open for half a day on Friday till 1 p.m. Eastern time. One of the slowest days of the year as everybody recovers from a turkey hangover. But we got one more day of action. We kick things off with the S&P slightly in the red this morning. We were up to a high of 6,047. Overnight, we're trading right now negative by five points at 6,033. NASDAQ 100, we're negative by 54 points, 20,939 to get the Dow in positive territory. We just hit 45,000. How about it? I think that's the first time ever. Is it? It is. First time ever we got it on the futures. 45,000. We're just off that level, still positive by 33 points right now in the Dow and the Russell. Leading the way as usual, positive by 7 tenths percent. We pull back a little bit. We got some economic data at 8.30. We'll get into those GDP numbers. How about Bitcoin? Right down to 90,000, back to 95,000. We're trading up $3,600 at 94,590. Gold catching a bid this morning. Off of the lows of Monday, 26.16. We're trading up $30 right now in the session at 26.76. Silver. Up by 13 pennies, and you jump to notes and bonds, and we got higher price and lower yield, and you got the 10 year sitting right at about four and a quarter percent. You take a look at the daily, quite a little bounce we got going on of higher price, lower yield. You back it up to the election. That's the election day, folks, that was lower price and higher yield. We're now above there. As in, since the election, you now have higher price and lower yield. Did you hear that? Since the election, higher price, lower yield, four and a quarter percent. On the 10 year, you jump over the dollar. Yeah, you better believe it, man. You, you talk about some weakness from 107 to 106, just like that. Now, that's going to put a little bit of a bid in gold. And yeah, you keep your eye on this dollar, man, because look at this weekly chart. Look at this bar we got. Folks, as I always say, sometimes you don't have to be a technical genius when it comes to charting. It's a very simple area of resistance that we're bumping up against you in the dollar. That resistance going back to October was as high as 107.34. That's October a year ago. April, we were as high as 106.51. In June, we're as high as 106.10. And you see the turnaround. And that spike to 108, boy, that was a brief spike, folks. There it is. Okay, realistically, you only got as high as about 107.60. Very briefly. You were overnight to a high of 108, but really this market was chopping around at about 107.5. 107.6 was where we were last Friday, and yeah, we've had quite a reversal. And you take a look on the daily, that is a reversal, and we'll see if it holds. But nonetheless, talked about this a little bit last week, the week prior, right? What would be, as my dad used to say, the market shop, take the most amount of money from the most amount of people in the least amount of time, and with the premise of higher yields following the election of Trump, it is interesting that all of a sudden we got lower yields, four and a quarter percent. Even on the tariff news, in terms of Monday, President-elect Trump talking about potential tariffs, talking about Mexico and Canada paying 25 percent, talking about China paying an extra 10 percent. But guess what? The market shakes it off. We got a weaker dollar. We got lower yields and we have gold popping a bit this morning. All right, we jump around to the news. How about some GDP numbers coming into Thanksgiving? The economy expanding at 2.8% annualized pace, right in line with estimates there. How about consumer spending? Not quite as hot as they were thinking, but still 3.5%, the number they're talking about there. Residential investment down 5%, non-residential investment up 3.8%. So decent numbers out of the GDP this number this morning. Gross domestic income rising 2.2%. That's right there. So decent numbers, pretty much in line with what the market was thinking about. And yeah, we'll see where we go from there. Personal consumption expenditure, PCI. How about this one? 1.5% annualized rate in the third quarter. Excluding food and energy, core PCE, 
2.1%. Chairman Powell has got to love that, getting ready for his turkey this Thanksgiving. What do we got going on there? Um, yes, so decent numbers in the economy, decent numbers pointing to low inflation. And yeah, you got the personal consumption expenditure. Now we got monthly PCE data coming out later, and we'll check out that as well. I think that hits at 10 o'clock, if I recall. Maybe somebody in the den can help me out. Pretty sure that hits at 10 o'clock, that number. All right. As we come into the Thanksgiving holiday, where are we going to kick things off? Yeah, let's kick it off and stay on yield. So. Home purchase applications rising to the highest since February. Now, it's interesting. You, you put it, you know, I got a couple articles pointing to the same thing. Home demand for mortgages jumps 12% after first interest rate drop in over two months. <clears throat> what do I always say? Percentages on small numbers can be deceiving, okay? 52% higher than a week ago, <clears throat> excuse me, than a year ago, than the same week a year ago. Again, 52% higher. Small numbers we're dealing with compared to where we were. The average contract interest rate, 30-year fixed, 6.86. Might as well call it 7, folks. You go from 6.9 to 6.86, right? First interest rate drop in two months, folks, that's not moving the needle, okay? These headlines, home demand mortgages jump after the first interest rate drop in two months. Folks, we're dealing with almost 7%. <clears throat> Applications to refinance a home dropped 3% for the week, but were 120% higher than the same week a year ago. So as you can see, numbers okay, but yeah, total mortgage demand up 6.3% compared with the previous week. Folks, we got mortgage rates at 7%. Now I just, you know, the 10 years sitting at four and a quarter percent, so we should get a little help in that market. We'll see where we go. Average purchase loan size, 439,000. That is quite a number when you think that's the loan size. Okay, that's not the purchase price. <clears throat> purchase loan size. Man. You got a pullback in FHA and VA refinances. Oh, look at this. So applications were significantly higher than a year ago. But that's because this is comparing it to Thanksgiving last week. That's that's not a fair comparison at all. They bury the lead there. As in everything compared to Thanksgiving week last year, this is not Thanksgiving week, right? It was, but we're getting the data for last week. All right. Nonetheless, we jump around. We talked about GDP. Yeah, how about Kohl's yesterday? This one, I was reading this one from the journal this morning. Yeah, out at 530. And boy, you check out Kohl's, man. They disappointed investors yesterday. You look at the dive down to 14.22. We're trading right now at 15.16. And yeah, um, this is the CEO. He's on his way out. And uh, they got a lot to fix is what they're talking about. How about a 9.3% drop in quarterly sales at stores open for at least a year? That's a number, man. <laughs> look at that. So he takes control in December 2022. He gets two years, and in that time, the stock goes from about 30 down to $15. We jump around to some of the other retailers. Coming into this first break, you check out Target shares. Trading at 127 up about a dollar. Walmart shares this morning, pushing 92 for an all-time high. Man, Walmart on fire. Stay tuned, folks. Coming back. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by four points right down. NASDAQ negative by 45, and it is going to be interesting uh, in terms of when the volume falls off today, right? We got a slow day, man. Thanksgiving tomorrow, market open for a half day on Friday, but one of the slowest days out there. And you can expect <clears throat> this market to potentially trail off, and I say that, right, sometimes. So don't mistake that it'll be a light day of low volume for potentially low volatility because what can happen is sometimes when there's less market participants volatility can actually be greater because you have less participants less players in the market a few players might be able to move that market a little bit doesn't mean it won't reverberate next week when everyone's back in front of their desk but it is one of the things that can play out and speaking of let's talk a little turkey so turkey prices have dropped but americans are cutting back on thanksgiving feasts <clears throat> now interesting here when you look at the amount of turkeys produced turkey production the lowest since 1985 what's going on with all the turkeys man we peaked out in 1996 how does that make sense right you think about population growth you think about everything <clears throat> 300 million turkeys getting produced basically during the 90s and we're at 200 million now 100 million extra turkeys gone pretty remarkable nobody wants any inventory anymore yeah. Increasingly price sensitive, the retailers, not surprising. And the only thing they can do is limit their purchases to limit their exposure. Yeah, and that's what they talk about here. Typically, you get less turkeys. What's that mean? Modern and classical economics, supply and demand. You got less supply. Where the curves meet is going to be a higher price point, but that's not what's going on right now. Demand for turkey fell in 2024. What's going on with all the turkey eaters out there? Are you just staying on the fixings? Whole turkeys 
down 20% from a year ago in the four-week period ended November 30th. Sales of turkey breast, 17% higher, while legs were up about 3.8%. Demand is shifting to smaller quantities of meat. What are they going for? Nice turkey breast. You don't need a whole turkey. You just get the nice big turkey breast. Average cost of a Thanksgiving meal for 10 people is 58 dollars for 8 10 people? Who's making Thanksgiving turkey for 10 people for 5808? Can we stop the show there? Let's get a little feedback in the den. What do you think about that number? Who's cooking Thanksgiving dinner for 10 people? Is that what that says? Let me read that one again. Average cost. I thought that was going to say per person. Can't say per person, right? 10 people is 5808? I guess. I don't think that's what flies right now, folks. $58 at, the, at Publix, as we know. All right, so we bring that up. It's anecdotal, but we know in this day and time, inflation, et cetera. Then you go to Black Friday. And this is interesting how it ties in as well. Yeah, no way, exactly, Johnny. I know. I had to read it three times to make sure I was even reading what I was talking about there. $58. Folks, I can barely make a, a dinner for Tommy, me, you know, a dinner for four for $58 at home, let alone a Thanksgiving feast for 10 people for $58. Good luck. Now, staying with inflation. This one, when was this out? Early this morning as well. <clears throat> I was reading it before, the program. And yeah, inflation battered consumers are going to extreme lengths to nab holiday deals. Now, I was at Target yesterday. I was. And they had some good sales. They did. They're all trying to gear up. They're trying to do it early. They got less time between Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. And, you know, this, this article from Bloomberg, it's got a lot of anecdotal going on in here, okay? People who are trying to save money. Um, Jamie Johnson Duplessis. She spent it maybe two fifty to five hundred on each of her children, down from a thousand to fifteen hundred. Let me tell you, folks, kids getting fifteen hundred bucks in Christmas presents—that's a big one, man. In years past, um, they talk about other people trading down, maybe purchasing a pre-owned rowing machine versus a regular one. The point of this, folks, you can go over it. It ties into how we ended last segment with Walmart. You better believe this thing's on fire, man. Everybody's looking for sales. I keep harping on it, but there is a shift going on for consumers, and Walmart is the ultimate benefactor. We're pushing $92. We've never seen $92 on Walmart before, and that's at a time that you see stuff like Kohl's, right, taking it on the chin. You're going to open down another 10 pennies to 15.11 for Kohl's. Target, look at that chart, man, down from 254 a couple years ago, were cut in half versus where Walmart is. You check out Amazon, different story. Now, Amazon's got a lot in the mix, but they charged higher yesterday. You're at 207.50 for Amazon. Look at the run that they've had this week alone, right? Look at that run that Amazon had from 202 to 207. You were at 195 last Thursday. Remarkable in retail. But Walmart, you talk about a benefactor. What's going on? <laughs> there you go, Paul. Homegrown turkey for eight. With family in New Hampshire, cost priceless. I love it. You got it, man. That's all that matters, exactly. Home-growing turkey. Gobble, gobble. Get out and get ready for Thanksgiving, folks. And be safe on Thanksgiving, okay? Take an Uber. We say it every time, but please, protect yourself. Be careful. It's a holiday season. We're coming into Christmas, all right? Um, buy some Uber shares and then pay yourself. That's what we'll say. No, I kid. But it is too easy right now, folks, to take an Uber to avoid drunk driving. It's a holiday season. Life's too beautiful. Have some fun. Take an Uber. Make sure you come back alive and in one piece because uh, the holidays are too much fun. We know it. People out there, you have a cocktail plan for it, folks. And yeah, Bitcoin, you talk about it. We reach 100,000. We pull back a bit. Now, let's talk a little bit of micro strategy. All right. Man, you talk about volatility. How about from 548 to 338? You hear that? 548 to 338 from Thursday to Tuesday, folks. And this is when we've just had Bitcoin go from 100,000 to 95,000. You hear that? Bitcoin is traded from 100,000 to 95,000. And you have MicroStrategy trading from around 500 down to 350 to 383. It is a remarkable volatility vehicle for Bitcoin, if that's what you're looking for, folks. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it at there. You're back to 350. You're going to open at about 380. And that's basically the high from November 13th at 383.40. And yeah, that was the first acceleration we got off the election. Then you got the second acceleration up to almost 550. But this morning, 
We're going to open up by about $30 as you got Bitcoin charging back to about 95000 All right. Now, it's Wednesday. We got a treat. We're going to have our man Teddy Cakestack coming up at 40 past the hour. And it's a great day, man. I can't wait to get his take on some of the action, whether we got lower yield, right, coming at you. We got the 10 year under four and a quarter percent right now. We got the dollar approaching a 105 handle. We're at 10618 right now. And that giving gold a little bit of a bid as we got gold up by $28. Now, I talked about this earlier in the week, right? Take a look at silver. We'll put it on a weekly, okay? Now, let's just put it on a daily to see the run-up we've had. The run really began in February, right? Yeah, the run in the metals began in February. But look at where we are in silver versus you take a look at gold. Okay, that's the same time frame chart, folks. Different stories, and you see it in the equities as well. Different stories, silver looking a little weak, copper looking a little weak, gold looking relatively strong. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're coming back for the opening bell. Don't go away. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the market open. You get the S&Ps kick things off negative by five points, trading at 6,033. NASDAQ 100, barely in the red. We jump around to some of the magnificent seven. You get Apple shares catching a bid on the open. Look at that. We were lower at 233. Just like that, the market opens and boom, $2 to the upside. Always interesting, right? On that opening bell, we really find out where supply is going to equal demand. You got Apple. 
following higher by $2 right now. You jump over to Amazon shares, basically flat, negative by about 50 pennies. You jump over to Microsoft, down about 8 tenths percent, $3 in the red at 4.24 this morning. You jump over to Google, down about 3 tenths percent right now, trading at 169.91. Meta shares slightly in the red. They drop on the open by about a dollar. You're trading at 572. We jump over to Tesla shares up by about seven tenths percent, trading at 340. Salesforce has been a rocket ship, man. You check out the daily on this thing, right? From 240 to 350 over the period about the last three months. You're trading at 335 for Salesforce right now. We check out some of the streamers. Netflix shares breaking out of its channel to the upside. We're trading down five dollars this morning for Netflix. There's your action on the open. You give back some of yesterday's gains. We're trading at 867 right now for Netflix. Warner Brothers Discovery up by 1.5% right now. And you check out Disney up by four tenths. You know, I'll say Warner Brothers Discovery. So I was just doing an inventory of my streaming subscriptions that I have. Okay. And what's interesting was I looked at my Disney subscription. Okay. And my Disney subscription originally had the bundle with Hulu and ESPN Plus. I said, I really don't need those. Um, the bummer of it is when I thought I was getting ESPN Plus, I said to myself, maybe I'll get some Monday night football games on there. ESPN, there's no, they keep those games for ESPN mostly. When they air two games, sometimes they'll put a game on ESPN Plus. But that's the reason why people subscribe to cable these days is ESPN's a big component of it. That's why ESPN has not put that programming on a standalone app because they make so much money off of normal cable subscriptions that they get. I think it's 8 or $9 per subscriber goes to ESPN directly, which is bonkers when you think about how many subscribers there are, okay? But the point being, so I go into Disney, and what do I see? Let me see if I can even pull it up while we're talking about it, that there is... There are now bundles that include HBO Max. I keep calling it HBO Max because I want to. It's just called Max. I'm going to try and see if I can pull it up. The point being, I found myself saying, you know what? I should bundle these and I should cancel my Max subscription. They're going to cannibalize themselves. Okay? And I am. I'm getting there. Give me one second. Yeah, perfect. I think this is where I am. Hold on. It sure is. Perfect. Okay. Pay attention to this one. Let me just blow it up. Perfect. Here we go. All right. So these are the plans that are available. Okay. And what's remarkable here, folks, is they have plans now that include Disney, Hulu, and Max for $16.99 a month. Okay. Disney Basic is $10.00. You want no ads? It's sixteen dollars, okay? And they're pushing one fifty nine a year, but I think it was sixteen dollars. But I, I saw this and I said, man, this is going to have people canceling their Max subscription to bundle Disney and Max. I don't know. I just found it. You know, I'm not the only one, folks, that pulls this up and says, you know what? I can actually save money by canceling my Max subscription. I was subscribing to both. Yes, there's going to be synergies there. They can get subscribers that they don't have. But I wonder how many people were paying separately for Disney and for HBO Max that they might actually lose money when those customers start consolidating that and saving money versus spending extra money with those two companies as they have a partnership there. Nonetheless, I thought it was interesting. But Warner Brothers, they're higher today. Disney's up by nine tenths percent today. Netflix shares down by about two tenths percent. All right, we check back in on the market. S&P is holding up pretty well, down by just four points right now. And yeah, let's jump around to see what else we got going on in this market. So we're going to get PCE out at 10 a.m. Okay, that's the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. So keep your eye on that. And yeah, let's talk a little bit of chat GPT. So... There was this story out there in terms of they're getting another investment, okay? And you pull this over. ChatGPT is not going to take everyone's jobs, folks, but you better be able to use these types of technologies because they are the forefront. OpenAI gets a new $1.5 billion investment from SoftBank, allowing employees to sell shares 
in a tender offer. Okay. They recently had 6.6 billion funding at 157 billion valuation. Now, I go from there to this article. And yeah, these are the types of things. Start getting used to it. I find myself searching many more items with ChatGPT, and I don't even pay for the premium one. They give you a certain amount of searches initially if you're really using it for business. But yeah, how about just finding deals? Yeah, savvy Black Friday shoppers using AI to find deals. And they always get into the anecdotal, okay? But for the second year in a row, John Malervi, 46, from Philly. I'm sure he's a fan of those Eagles. How about those Eagles and Saquon Barkley? Side Sidebar on that one. He's my fantasy running back. The Eagles. The vaunted Eagles when it comes to the Patriots. Um, but, boy, they're on fire, Saquon. And how about those Giants? I digress. But did anybody watch Hard Knocks and see the documentary in action of the Giants basically refusing to sign Saquon? And nonetheless, now they're out without a quarterback. Uh, we digress. So keep it in mind, folks, all right? The article speaks for itself. People are using it everywhere. They're bringing in more money on ChatGPT, $1.5 billion from SoftBank. And yeah, these are the things you really want to start thinking about, okay? As in using these for what could be a mundane task, right? But this is where AI is going to be on fire, man. Yeah. And that's where, you know, these companies, you see Amazon, I believe they're going big on Anthropic, right? Everybody's gearing up. On a recent quest, Chappie GPT suggests a 12-hour romp through New York City that began at 6.30 a.m. If you haven't tried it, folks, try Chappie GPT because it's amazing what it can put together, and you're seeing it everywhere. And, yeah, you're seeing it on that one as well. All right. How about Elon? There you go, right? And I didn't even time this, but it's all there, folks. Inside Elon Musk's quest to beat OpenAI at its own game. This one out earlier this morning from the journal. I mean, think about this company and how often they're mentioned everywhere. You got ChatGPT, which is OpenAI. You got Gemini, which is Google. You got XAI. Okay, but you got Anthropic out there, too, that Amazon's funneling a bunch of money into as well. So the startup told investors its revenue was on pace to surpass $100 million. That's XAI. And this is where you could see Musk. And this is what I don't quite understand in terms of Tesla. He's got so much going on, man. It seems like he's gotten the multiples out of Tesla when you're pushing a trillion-dollar valuation. Where are we at right now? $1.08 trillion. Maybe he moves on to uh, XAI. But you know what, folks? We're going to come back. We're going to talk some currencies. We're going to talk some dollar. We're going to talk some yields. We're going to talk some crude with our man, Teddy Kegstad. Don't go Are away. We'll be right to back. take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school. 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We've got the S&Ps negative by four right now, and we got a treat. We're going to jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can check out Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out new issues every Monday, updates throughout the week when warranted. You can subscribe for only $97. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Check that out right under the newsletter tab at TFNN. And if you want some great webinars, folks, under the services tab, he's got two webinars, Capitalizing on Time with Calendar Stock Option Spreads. And then he's got Japanese candlestick pattern, stock and option strategies, well worth the $97 for each of those folks. You gain access to that. It's put right on your members page. You can watch it as many times as you'd like. Check that out. Maybe you got a little bit of extra time over the Thanksgiving holiday. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving, Tommy. Happy Thanksgiving, man. Always uh, kind of a nice holiday the way it falls on Thursday. The markets are open for a half a day on Friday, but everybody's going to be a little hungover from Turkey, so we got a nice little <laughs> weekend. Um, but how about these markets, man? We've had some volatility. <clears throat> we got a little bit of weakness in the dollar today, but where do you want to kick things off? What are you watching, Teddy? Uh, well, we had the uh, unemployment claims that came out this morning a little bit lower, so you know that's inflationary. Uh, <laughs> so, but uh, right now the bonds are basically uh, making the move. You know, we in the Tiger Forex report, I put it out. You know, on uh, Sunday, and it said uh, spike high last Friday, maybe. Well, I think we can say that yeah, last Friday was a spike high. And now remember that the dollar has been very strong for the past few months. You know, yeah. and especially <clears throat> except for the last couple of weeks where it has been buffering highs, it's been pretty vertical. So, I mean, right now we're, we're due for a little bit of a correction, whether it's profit taking or fundamental, whatever, you know. So right now what's going on, I think is healthy. Um, we did take out, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the rejected high yesterday, making a lower move high kind of on the intraday, you know, and setting up a new lows today, I think is kind of nice for buffering the lows that we had set over a week ago. And I think we could break still a little bit more. You know, am I looking, am I very bearish the dollar right now? Not really, you know, but if you look at the, how the bonds and the 10 year are moving, remember we do have a Fed meeting coming up. And right now yields have been on their highs, you know, versus, you know, the curve is going differently. The Fed's been cutting and yields actually went up, you know. So and I figure that the main thing you're gonna see now is not so much of a profit taking rally but you remember that we had basically two to almost three quarter points factored into the market already with the last high, meaning low in yields before they started cutting, correct? So we've been now we've been hovering off of these highs. So I think you're going to have a little bit of a rubber band effect. Now, I don't think we're going to go and take out those highs, meaning excessively new lows in yields. Um, I think that the market has to be prepared for what we've been talking about, that this in this cycle, 
that yields are going to stay high no matter what. The banks are going to get a spread. Are they going to come back? Sure, they're going to come back a little bit. But the reality is, is the banks want money and people demand rates because they want, they're not going to give you money for CDs or put money into a bank account unless they're getting interest now. You know, even younger people are like, hmm, isn't this amazing? I never knew you could get interest on a bank account or on a CD. You know what I mean? So, I mean, mortgages right now are at like around six point something percent. I would say you'd be lucky, you know, unless the Fed does some really aggressive cutting over the next six months that you're not going to see the mortgage rates probably go below five and a half percent, you know, within the next yeah. six months, you know. So yeah. I think that's what's driving the dollar right now is you have that correction in yields. So that's softening the dollar right now. Yeah, I appreciate the take Rob, jumping around to different markets. And it is interesting, man, in terms of we it was a good almost 20 year period that it felt like there was no risk free rate of return anywhere. And now four to five percent seems like I agree, you know, especially if you've been fortunate enough to ride the equity rally. And, you know, I talk where we trade technically, we're looking at, you know, Forex, we're looking at technicals, we're short term traders, a lot of us swing traders. But on mm -hmm. a longer term basis, it is remarkable in terms of the market has run up so much that maybe you diversify for a risk free rate of return to almost sure. 5%, like you're talking about. It, it's uh, it's a different world, it feels like, it versus the last 10, 20 years. I agree, people are gonna demand it. And, you know, I was talking about just conversations around Thanksgiving and everything is still perceived expensive, right? So putting your money right. in a bank account to get no interest, that just, uh, in, in light of cost, people just, uh, yeah, it's not quite there. I agree. Right. Hey, what do you think about, and it, and it ties to everything you were just saying, and you basically already answered the question, but I was thinking a little bit bigger picture. Everyone, you know, you had Trump talking about the tariffs, I think Monday, right, saying uh -huh. maybe we're going on Mexico and Canada. So the rhetoric's going to start coming into reality when he comes in January 20th. But it is interesting that, you know, my dad always used to say, Teddy, the, the goal of the market is take the most amount of money away from the most amount of people in the least amount of time, as it can be so deviant sometimes. Mm -hmm. And to see that yields are actually now below that first move that you got on the election. Now, do you think that speaks to anything going forward? Or is that just kind of how you, you mention it, where there was a lot of factored in, right? Trump already had a big lead in terms of mm -hmm. the polls going into the election were favored. But it is interesting. I'm just looking at the 10-year right now. Um, mm -hmm. You're at a higher price. So yields have actually dropped since the election day. What do you think about that? Are we just waiting to find out? I know it's kind of a big picture question. But it is interesting uh -huh. if you said that, you know, following that first move on November 5th, yields are right. actually lower now after hitting almost 4.5. Right, right. So, um, well, I think that right now that's just <clears throat> a profit taking reaction. And I think you really have okay. to wait until we get past January. You know, um, nice. I, nice. I think honestly that we're going to see a lot of chop. We're going to see a lot of good volatility. I think swing traders are going to have like a, definitely right now since the election. There's been a there's been a swing trade in the currencies even intraday. You know, I mean, before it was like there was nothing but a pittance. You should you if you were I mean, I spent what? Five months, six months telling everybody, sorry, there's nothing here to trade. Yeah. You know, Patience, there wasn't. Right? There wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, if when you look at now, you see the expanding volatility, you start to look back being like, oh, my gosh, who was trading the last five, six months? They must have been getting murdered, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, and now we're coming into a healthy environment for traders, you know, as far as the economy and everything else is concerned. Well, that's a totally different uh, dynamic, you know, but I think for, for those of us that are market participants, you know, we're looking for, um, I think, a very opportunistic year ahead of us is what we have. Yes. You know what I mean? I so like I don't care whether you're trading gold, oil, stocks, options, futures, Forex, um, you're going to have opportunities over the next year, you know, a ton. You know, I mean, we have just, if, if even 10% of what they're talking about as far as whether it's deregulation or actually making regulations be held accountable, which is what this administration really is about. If that happens, I mean, think about the food companies alone, what's going to have, how much of a dynamic they're going to change. You already have manufacturers that are moving back from China since Trump won the election because they already know they're like, screw the tariffs. They're like, we're, I mean, when you, when you see that momentum and that's already happening now, if we only have like 10% of that next year, I mean, think about the opportunities you're going to have. I mean, you could have a, a rallying stock market and have so many stocks that are going to collapse, it's not even going to be funny. Because they should. They're overvalued. 
You know, sure. they've been conducting bad business. You know, they'll adjust. Yep. They're not going anywhere. But you can expect some really nice swings. I would expect, especially for options traders, I think you're going to have phenomenal spreading opportunities where you're going to get so much bang for your buck on the risk. I like it, man. Hey, can you stay with us and talk a little bit of crude when we come back? Sure. All right. We're going to talk a little bit of crude, folks. We'll come back with our man, Teddy. Stay tuned. We'll come right back, folks. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps off by seven. NASDAQ 100 in the red by about 138 points. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You heard us just talking options, folks. That's where check out those outstanding webinars, both of them talking about options, whether you're talking about calendar stock option spreads or Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies. Check those out under the services tab. Uh, some great webinars, and we maybe got a little extra time during the holidays, and I wanted to get your take on crude, Teddy. So we've just been chopping around. Between about the 69, maybe the 70, we caught a little bit of a bid up to above $70, but we're just pushing 69.15. I saw on the gas price, I know we were talking about it yesterday, you were saying coming down, man, at Sam's, I get my my gas at Sam's, so I'm paying less than, than usual, but I think it was 276 out here, Teddy, 276. Mm -hmm. I said, man, what is that price? Um, what do you think about crude at some uh, 
low prices right now. You know what? I think it's going to be in a range trade between 67 and uh, 72 probably for the next few months. Um, I like the I like the high that we set on uh, Friday, you know, and we had nice. a big reversal on uh, Monday. And I think yeah. that's pretty much I wrote that in the Tiger Forex report that, you know, what it was in a bull trend going into this week. Where I'm like, you know what? This is most likely a range trade. So don't get married to your lungs. Get ready for a pullback. And it did sharply on Monday and it came right into the middle of the range. It's been in now since what is it? The be middle of September, beginning of September. You know, yeah. so we're looking at over two and a half months where oil has basically been trading between 65 and 75. You know, and I think right now we're just in that chart, that little choppy pattern. And I would expect to be in a sell rally forecast. If the market gets above 74 to 76 dollars in that range, I'd be a bear. You know, I think then you're going to have nice. some good selling opportunities, you know, especially as we get closer and closer to the inauguration, you know. So I think the nice. longer term price target. Remember, I talked about this a few weeks ago about the, the, the rollovers with futures and stuff like that. Why oil is probably trading the way it is, is that you have as far as delivery dates now going out into next year. I bet you they're buying contracts that are much lower than they were before. You know, so I was looking at the chart. I was drawing a couple. That's a very clear area. I appreciate it. Whether it's 67 or that's 7250 to 75, 76 dollar area. Teddy, I appreciate it. Have a great Thanksgiving, man. You're welcome. You too. To you Take week. care, guys. Thanks, folks. Have a great Thanksgiving. Stay safe out there. No drunk driving. We'll see you back here on Monday.